afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, my name is, uh, as I've been introduced, my name is Naomi Shadrach. I'm a Women Land Policy Advisor for Oxfam International. Um, thanks to Land at Scale Program and Land Portal for inviting me um, to this uh, first thematic Land at Scale webinar on gender transformative approach. Um, so I'm going to share a few insights uh, based on Oxfam's experience on transformative leadership on women's land rights. Um, uh, but uh, important thing to say is um, gender transformative uh, leadership on women's land rights. It's a continuous process. We continue to learn as Oxfam. It's something which we keep learning and reflecting on our work. Uh, uh, the introduction uh, of uh, gender transformative leadership on women's land rights, the way I put it uh, is it is an approach for securing women's land rights, which transform power relations and structure and allow the leadership potential of women in accessing, controlling, managing, and owning land and land-related resources. Uh, so it starts from personal change uh, by allowing us um, practitioner, advocate, uh, civil society, government to think transformatively and then transforming architecture of power within our institutions and the institutions we are working with to deliver for women's land. Um, so before um, uh, the principles and value we can think about um, when we want to achieve transformative leadership on women's land rights, um, first, we have to know that women's land rights is a human right. Um, it helps, uh, you, women's land rights helps women um, to access other rights, such as rights to food, uh, rights to shelter, um, identity, uh, food security, we know that. But also, um, uh, women uh, land rights help women to um, get gender equality, to allow women to enjoy um, their rights to land equally to men. But it also allows participation of all stakeholders, women, men, vulnerable group, visible group, and invisible group. Uh, but also thinking about transformative leadership of women, women's land rights, it helps us to um, meaningful uh, consult throughout the process of the project. So um, from beginning of the project up to the end. But it helps us to respect the dignity of people uh, because uh, um, transformative leadership, as uh, I will discuss uh, later, uh, wants us to look at our own politics and practice of power uh, to make sure that um, the way we are implementing the project um, respect the dignity of people we are working with, uh, but also transformative leadership is a collective thinking and collective decision making. So all the stakeholders um, working in the program, working collectively to change, to, um, to, to effect the social change. So um, as we are planning to start uh, the project, I know some are at the inception phase, some have already started implementing um, there, I think there are a few things to consider um, uh, if we want to make sure our, our projects um, achieve transformative leadership for women's land rights. The first and foremost, very important, is the gender analysis. Do we have the gender analysis? Has it been done? Has, is it completed? What does it tell us? Looking at the key issues on the gender analysis. Um, so um, if the project has a gender analysis or at the country level, uh, before implementing, you look at what, those very important elements which um, gender analysis tells us. What are the social variables such as ethnicity, culture, age, and social class of the people we are going to work with? What are the norms on gender? Uh, information about women, men, girls, boys, uh, in terms of their division of labor, roles and responsibility uh, they play, uh, what are their roles to accessing and controlling over resources and relative condition and po position uh, in the society. So we have to know like the women we are going to work with, what is their position in the society? Uh, and uh, also issues such as 
data, qualitative and quantitative data, because they help us to reflect, um, because what we want is to be able to measure how much uh, we have effective transformative leadership uh, on women's land rights. So we have we need to have quantitative and qualitative data, but also highlight on specific vulnerability of women and men, uh, uh, girls and boys. Um, so um, we have to know what are their vulnerability for now, because we are going to go there with the project. We have to know what is their vulnerability for now and um, what are the potential for change? Uh, what um, what are the agencies uh, which we can uh, support? What which, what the project can support and um, can give us potential for change? Yeah. So I've mentioned about data, the disaggregated data uh, uh, showing age, race, and other identities uh, in the in the community uh, or in the country. Uh, but also we should have a monitoring and evaluation framework. Uh, uh, which will include aspects we have uh, draw, aspects drawn from the gender analysis. So the, the identities and um, uh, sex, uh, the gender I've mentioned above, all those should be put on the monitoring and evaluation framework to make us able to monitor and to um, measure how, um, uh, what are the progress we are making. Um, and also, um, how are we making sure that um, uh, groups are participating, uh, women and represented groups, invisible groups uh, in the community, there might be invisible groups. How are they um, participating? Uh, if not in designing project, even during the initial phase of the project um, for them to be able uh, to give their views. But another very important, um, aspect of the, uh, to ensure that we are achieving gender transformative leadership is, do we have a system of sharing feedback in the project? Uh, because that's what gives power, you know, give power to the, to the stakeholders we are working. Are there adequate mechanism in place for women, men, boys and girls to share feedback and raise concerns, criticisms and complaints about the activities we are doing? Uh, because if they see um, our activities are increasing their vulnerability, they should be able to tell us so that we can do better before the project reached um, a certain level. Yeah, so do we have gender experts in the project? Or because it's a land program, land project, we just do it. So it's very important we have a gender expert. If we don't have a gender expert at the country or at the civil society, we have to make sure we are collaborating with the gender unit, maybe at the government level, if it's a government project, or, or we should make sure we, we are getting um, input from external gender experts if that was not considered. But uh, importantly, we should have a gender expert advising and monitor, monitoring how we are we are doing this, um, uh, we are implementing the, the program and the project at the country level. If there are specific uh, targeted investments, budget allocated to addressing gender issue, some land projects um, do not consider gender uh, and like investment on gender in the land project may be very minimal. But um, uh, if we really want to make sure there's transform gender transform transformation in the project, we have to make sure there's, there's a budget. Uh, for doing that. Um, and another thing is, what, are, what is the nature of our activities? Do they transform traditional gender roles held by women, men, and other gender? Or it's just the implementation of activities, but do not look at the traditional gender roles within the community. Um, and lastly, the primary objective of the planned activity to change trans uh, or transform traditional gender roles held by women, men, and other gender. This is very important because like ultimate goal is to transform um, social, um, to, to effect social change in the community and make sure that women uh, and other vulnerable groups uh, are key agents and um, uh, are key agent to transformation uh, and bringing change. Uh, and that's what um, uh, gender transformative leadership, uh, why, that's how, why it's very important. Uh, 
Yeah, so now we are going to look at a few examples um, of what um, we term as gender blind, gender aware, gender sensitive and gender transformative. I think this is very important because some projects, um, maybe that you may be doing something and it's very important, uh, but uh, forgetting that that's, that's gender blind. Uh, so gender blind um, in the project, which uh, we can say it's a gender blind, a person chooses not to see difference between gender. Uh, so there is a risk that um, the project could reinforce inequality and lead to unintended negative consequences to women, girls, and boys. The project acknowledges difference between gender, but does not do anything to address them. Simply, the project does not challenge traditional gender roles, relations, social norms, or division of labor that are root causes of gender inequality and power imbalance. Yeah. So you find you have the project, but um, um, you see you see an issue. You see an issue, but you don't um, you you don't um, you you choose to be blind. You 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 choose to not um, uh, um, uh, to to not see the if the issue is because of uh, of, um, of of gender so you, be, you become blind example the project does not respond to gender analysis issue uh, as i said earlier we should have a gender analysis in the countries most of the country like the gender ministry they have uh, they they have um, gender analysis uh, even uh, even project one or country one, they have it, but that the project address, respond to gender, gender analysis issue, or uh, do we have a mechanism for participation, consultation? So um, these kind of um, issues can lead us uh, to, um, to a gender blind project, uh, and the project refuses to see power dynamic. Um, if you, um, you're talking about participation of women, uh, then the project says, uh, the project says, okay, it's okay. We have this number. You don't, you don't consider this um, gender uh, number of women and number of men. Uh, this can end up to uh, increase vulnerability and reinforcing gender inequality. But also, I want to speak a, a little about gender aware. We can have a project which, which is gender aware. Uh, in tune with differences, the project is in tune with differences, expectation and need of people of different gender, but has limited activities to respond to the need of um, the, the practical needs of, of, of women. So activities, knowledge, division of labor and roles in the project are known, but does not challenge traditional gender roles, relation or social norms. Sometimes challenging social norms can be um, seen as dangerous so you find the project does not touch the social norm and so it's gender where they are like the project understand the social norms but chooses to keep quiet uh, to address or to challenge the social norms so this is a project which aware but uh, it does not um, does not do better um, because of limited action to challenge uh, these gender roles in relation in social norms the gender aware project has high risk to um, to cause intended negative consequence for women, girls, and other vulnerable groups. Um, uh, the the third um, type uh, I want to talk about is gender sensitive or gender responsive project, which acknowledge differences and inequality between women and men and other gender, and and seek to respond to their uh, specific practical needs. So it perform all the activities to make easier um, things easier for women and men to fulfill their duties based on the gender roles and targeted specific group of women and other gender uh, and seeks to identify um, the issue, uh, the risk, uh, which can cause unintended negative consequence. As I said, the first one may lead to risk of increasing vulnerability. Uh, the gender sensitive project make sure that mitigate uh, the risk which can come uh, because of uh, 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 an intended negative consequence uh, which can come uh, because of the project. So we want to achieve the general transformative, uh, uh, transformative leadership on women's land rights, uh, which um, goes beyond acknowledging and responding uh, between uh, responding on issues of women's land rights and other vulnerable group in the community. So this is what we want. And uh, 
as I said earlier, our activities have to address structural inequalities, issues of, of power across the program, across the community, and tackle powerlessness of the women. Yeah. So if women do not own land, what we are, like our program is going to tackle why are they powerless? Uh, why why are they not uh, why are they very vulnerable? So this is what our project is going to do. And activity our activities are aiming at changing behavior and attitude and transform the, the position of women, the position of vulnerable group in the community. And we are making sure that resources are located to build the capacity of women and girls to build the agency, which is very important to effective change and to build the potential of change because the gender analysis has told us what is the agency and what is the potential of change in this group. So our, we are going to make sure that there's, there's enough resource um, to build the agency, to build uh, the potential uh, and increase their representation in leadership, increase the decision-making power and control of resources and making sure that we are mitigating all the risk of unintended negative consequence. So I would challenge everyone, um, everyone of us um, in their activities um, to support, uh, to, to making sure that we are reaching to, uh, to that stage. For example, uh, for the, in case there is a group here which is going to do a land, um, uh, support land certificates for women and vulnerable group. Uh, I, I would encourage us to build the capacity, build the agency, build the potential of change to the group we are going to support uh, with the land certificates uh, program to make sure that even after the end of the project, that group we are going to support is going to continue. So gender transformative leadership help um, the community uh, to, um, to, to continue with that work even after, after the project. So it helps sustainability of the project. This is what makes it very important. So um, I don't know how many minutes I still have. Uh, I, I want to share a little bit about some, um, some projects, um, uh, some, uh, some, some projects um, from the evaluation, which was done by Oxfam uh, on the project, which aimed at the transformative leadership for women's rights. So there's an example from Uganda, working with local cultural institution, um, so the example says, um, in terms of leadership, we are leading well, but with the problem on land rights, women have no voice. But if we can use local cultural institutions, they can influence great change. Our clan development, a constitution, our clan developed a constitution with a lawyer advising us and approving it. We set up good procedures for women who have been widowed and for many other things. Um, so from the, the example in Uganda, I've shared the link to this, um, uh, to this ma ma Oxfam material uh, with Mike, I think she'll share with you. Um, we can support um, women activist leadership and human rights defenders and the, and the male allies um, to work. Uh, so with the, with the example in Uganda, what, what we see is um, to see what are the, what, what are the institution of change. Uh, with here, the cultural institution, with, with the example in Uganda, with the cultural institution are very strong. How are we going to work with the cultural institution to transform um, social norms? Because that's where the challenge is. Another example I want to share with you is um, uh, women influencing access for healthcare in Tunisia. I think this example is, uh, is very important. Um, in the village of Kef and Kasserin, the women's demand was to have clear and transparent eligibility criteria for the free reduced fee healthcare card and for, the, for these women to be represented in the commission deciding on the individual's eligibility access of this card. The director of the Tunisia Union of Social Solidarity after lobby meeting uh, pledged to fulfill this demand nationally not only in this village and to have NGO represented in the committee. Now we are working to ensure the director's wells are converted into action and that the women themselves are represented in the commission. So I, I, I thought this example of women 
um, accessing platform of decision making is very important, even to us who are working on women's land rights. Um, so we find um, there are committees from the village level, uh, district level, up to national level in countries. How are we making sure that women are accessing that, those? Not only women, even the civil society. How are women, uh, how are civil society existing? Because if you are part of the decision-making table, you are able to influence change. And uh, how is the project um, planning to make sure that these are put into laws? Because um, if the project influences the changes, the change and leave, um, we need to make sure that there is continuation. Another uh, uh, example which I want to share is, um, uh, as I said, um, uh, gender transformative leadership is can be challenging, um, and can because you are challenging power. So uh, transformation change involves greater risk, and um, uh, transformative leadership for women's land, land rights land right, um, can, uh, can cause violence against women's human rights defender. Um, how, uh, uh, how is the project um, planning to support that? Because we are addressing social change and it's not easy um, to change um, people who are in power because power gives them comfortability. Um, so um, we have to have that in, in consideration that um, women land right defenders are going to experience challenges and the project should plan on how uh, we can support them because um, uh, what transformative leadership um, uh, for women land rights will do is to, to, um, to, 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 um, to challenge power and people, uh, people like who hold power, not everyone will be happy for their power to be challenged. So in conclusion, sorry if I've taken so much time. So in conclusion, an important element here is making sure that power is shared with all stakeholders throughout the project time, allowing them to sit at the driving seat toward the intended objective, allow women, girls, and vulnerable groups to be able to choose the, um, the future they desire, uh, they desire for themselves, um, how they want to uh, manage, control, and own their land. Transformative leadership for, for women's land rights is a sustainable, is sustainable because its impacts will go beyond the land at scale project. So even after the land at scale project has gone, um, the agency uh, we have built, the potential change we have built continue beyond the, the project uh, time. Uh, and lastly, I want to share uh, uh, from the pioneer, pioneer for, uh, uh, for transform transformative, transformative leadership for women's rights, Silata Bachi Wala, uh, uh, learning, uh, from, learning uh, on transformative feminist leadership. Um, so she has 4P, uh, 4P embedded in self, uh, and um, these are four P, uh, power, politics and purpose, practice and principle and value. So what she says is um, power is very important if you want to, uh, to effect transformative leadership for women's land rights and women's land rights. If you want our project to be transformative, we have to start with power, recognizing that we are not going to change uh, power structure within countries or village we, uh, we, we are going to, we, we, are, we, are, we will work in, but also we are going to change power structure um, on how uh, people are accessing land in village and country. But before that, we are going to make sure that we change how we exercise our own power as practitioners, as individuals, as the program. So um, reflecting on how as practitioners we are using our power, but after reflecting on self, then you go to see how you are going to, um, to change the power. And if, we, if, we, if you, you have power, um, if you acknowledge that you have power, which you have to use it well and co not cause more harm, and then you are transforming another power structure, then another P is politics and purpose of your power, how you are using your power. So as, as, as the program, we, are, we have power. How are we using our, our power and power of other, uh, of other people? So role of politics and purpose is very important. If you are using your power 
because you want to effect social transformation. So if we, we want to effect social transformation uh, in the countries we are working with, then our purpose is very right. And we are, we are moving toward um, gender transformative on, uh, on women's land rights. But um, another P comes uh, after politics and purpose. And this is principles, as I, principles and values, as I mentioned them earlier. Um, so our politics have to be built on certain principles and value. So how are we addressing our power uh, and how, what are the politics? But what principles and values are we carrying ourselves with? Are we respecting human rights, gender equality? Are we respecting dignity of people we are working with? These are very important. Uh, this sets boundaries and check on how we use our power and how um, we transform it, transform the institution we are working with. And the last, which depend on other three P I've mentioned is practice of transformative leadership. So practice of transformative leadership comes automatically. If you check on your power, you check on the politics and purpose which, which, um, which comes with your power and you have the right principles and value. At, at, um, automatically, your practice, the way the way you 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 your activities are, automatically um, will align uh, with your principles, and um, I think you will um, reach to a level where your activities, your program, uh, um, is gender uh, transformative, and you will be able to able to effect um, gender uh, transformative on women's land rights in the countries where we'll be implementing our project. Sorry for taking so much time. <laughs> this is the end of my, uh, my presentation. Thanks.